Hey guys, what's going on? What if I told you that there was a Bible story that had adventure, dragons, slavery, and at the end, they all lived happily ever after? You'd probably tell me that I'm lying because that sounds really exciting, but the Bible is a book, and books are boring. And you'd be right about the books being boring. And you would be surprised to learn that the Bible actually does have such a story. And this story is called the Feast of Tabernacles. So, let's begin. So the story of the Feast of Tabernacles begins a very long time ago, a time without Facebook or Instagram. This is back in a time when what they did for fun was pour salt on snails and race sticks down rivers. The first account that is given in the Bible of the Feast of Tabernacles is in Exodus 34, when God himself descended on Mount Sinai and told Moses a whole lot of important stuff. This is where God told Moses to tell the people of Israel that God commands them to keep the feasts of the Lord, which includes the Feast of Tabernacles. But we know these feasts were kept much further back than what God said to Moses on Sinai. If we go back just a few more chapters to Exodus 5, we see that Moses asked Pharaoh to let God's people go to hold a festival to him in the wilderness. But Pharaoh wasn't very pleased about that, and God kicked his butt for not letting them go. The festival of tabernacles and the other festivals of God were kept way before God had Moses write it down. Even though this festival has been kept a long time before it was written down, this was the first time the festival got a meaning. Leviticus 23 tells us that during this festival we are to live in temporary dwellings or booths to remind us that the Israelites also lived in booths when God brought them out of Egypt. So this festival represents the Israelites being freed and living in temporary dwellings. The end. Nah, that's not it. I told you that this story contained a dragon, so we are definitely not done yet. But first, we have to fast forward a few thousand years. Just like in the Old Testament, the Israelites were freed from slavery when they were brought into the desert to find a home. The same thing happens in the New Testament, but just on a much larger scale. In John 7, we see that Jesus celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. And since we are supposed to do as Jesus did, we are supposed to observe it as well. Hold up. Stop. The Festival of Tabernacles is a Jewish holiday that they celebrate to remember God freeing them from slavery and is simply a harvest festival. For a modern day Christian, it has no place in church. Um, no. Sorry. The Feast of Tabernacles means so much more today than it could have ever meant to the Jews. For example, what sounds better? The freeing of Israel from Egypt or the restoration of the entire planet? The answer is easy. The freeing of Israel. The prophecies that are within the Bible are almost exclusive to this time represented, the restoration of the world. This is one of the most exciting parts of the entire Bible, so I will read it word for word. Revelation 20, 1-3 And I saw an angel coming down out of heaven, having the key to the abyss, and holding in his hand a great chain. He sees the dragon. See, I told you there was a dragon. <laughs> you doubted me. The ancient serpent, who is the devil or Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss and locked and sealed it over him, to keep him from deceiving the nations any more until the thousand years were ended. After that, he must be set free for a short time. This is why this festival is so important. It represents a time when Satan, the enemy that tempts us with lusts, lies, deceits, and desires of the flesh, will be bound for a thousand years so that he cannot torture us any more. This will also be a time that God's elect will reign with him and become priest of God for a thousand years. And at the end, Satan will be released for a short time, but at this time God will devour them with fire, so that for the eternity to come he will not deceive anyone ever again. The kingdom of God will come to this earth, a place flowing with milk and honey, or hopefully chocolate milk and pizza, and something that has never happened before on earth will occur. Peace. If this was just a harvest festival, or just a remembrance of things in the past, it would be for the Jews. But it's not. It has a much larger significance for everyone on earth. 